In this video tutorial, I'm going to show you the cheats way to tracing images in Adobe Illustrator. So in this video, we're going to be tracing this picture here of Pinocchio, which will take us all of about one second. And then we're going to color him in once we've traced him. So that'll take us about one to two minutes afterwards. So it's a very quick process once you know how to tracing um, images in Adobe Illustrator. To get started on this tutorial, please load in the image of Pinocchio now. If you're in my class, I'll give you access to it. But if you're watching on YouTube, just hit the link in the video description below to get a copy of it. Now, once you have Pinocchio in on your page, head up to your window menu and select the image trace panel. This is where the magic happens. It's the image trace tool that is going to do the hard work for us and trace this image. Now, before we get started, it is handy to know that the um, images Illustrator traces best are the ones that look like Pinocchio. They are the black and white outline images with relatively thick black lines. You'll find if you're trying to trace photos, it'll be no good. If you're trying to trace um, probably vectors or cartoons with a lot of detail, it'll work. But if you zoom in close, you'll see that Illustrator leaves a few messy and jagged lines, which I'm not a huge fan of. So while it is a handy tool image trace, it's not going to suit all situations. But when you've got pictures just like this, black and white outline images, it's going to work a treat. And I've seen it work really well um, where students have drawn artworks on paper and they've gone around their artwork in a thick black pen. They've taken a photo of it with their phone and just put it into Illustrator and let Illustrator do all the hard work of tracing it. OK, so it works well for images like this. To get started on the tracing job itself, what you need to do is grab your selection tool from your toolbox and just click once on Pinocchio. Now with him selected, head over to your image trace panel. And while there are a lot of different settings here, especially under the advanced tab, advanced tab that you could use, we're not going to worry about them today. We're going to keep it simple and just use one of the preset tracing options. So click on the presets here and you've got a few different options there to pick from and a few of them would look pretty good. But what we're going to go for is the low fidelity photo trace. OK, so click on low fidelity photo trace. And if you watch super carefully, I might even zoom in a little bit here just so you can see it happen. So as you can see now it's a little bit pixelated. We're going to get rid of those pixels now by tracing it. OK, so let's trace it with a low fidelity photo option. It happens in about one second. So there you go. You can see now that the lines have been converted to vectors. And while it looks pretty good, there are a few issues. So you can see that little um, grey patch up there. And if I scroll down a bit lower, there's a few more around the outside of the eye. If I come across to the right, you'll see that some of these lines are quite jagged and messy. OK, so I'm not entirely happy with this trace just yet. And the way that I like to fix it is simply go to the mode here. And instead of tracing in colour, flip it around to black and white. And you watch these lines here just straighten themselves up. And all those little grey sections we saw, we saw before around the eye here, they've all disappeared. And if I zoom back, that's a pretty good trace. Everything looks really nice. The lines are crisp, they're clean, and I can't see any issues at all. So that is our image traced. So Illustrator did that in probably less than a second. Um, so it's very quick. Now the next job, once you've traced it, I'm just going to close that image trace panel now, is to click on it and break it all apart. And we use the expand um, option for that. You can either access it from your properties panel. So while you've got Pinocchio selected, you can go down and expand it. Or you can go to the object menu there and choose expand. And what that does is just breaks the image up into all the individual different parts. Now they're still grouped together, so you will have to go to your properties again while everything's still selected and choose ungroup. You can also right click on the picture and do it. Sometimes you need to ungroup it more than once, but I'm pretty sure that's worked just how I wanted it to, which is perfect. OK, so we've now got all the individual parts broken up. Um, the first thing that I do like to do once I've ungrouped it is get rid of the background. You can't see it now, but it has actually traced this white background. You can see when I hover over it here. All you need to do is click on it and press delete. Uh, just to show you all the different parts of this artwork, if you go to your layers panel, you can see here under layer one, there are all the different paths or all the bits and pieces that make up Pinocchio. So there's quite a bit going on there behind the scenes, but we don't need to worry about that for now. OK, so with Pinocchio all broken up, um, he's ready to be colored in. So the quickest way to color him in, I find, is to get a reference image off the Internet. So I'm just going to um, zoom back a bit here 
and I have downloaded this picture of Pinocchio already. I'll put the link in the video description too if you want it. Um, and I'm going to bring that into Illustrator and just set it next to my picture here of Pinocchio. And I'm just going to reference the colors from this artwork and drop them into mine. And the way we do that is we use the um, dropper tool here. Is it the dropper or the eyedropper? The eyedropper tool. Okay. So if you click on a color now, say for example the yellow hat, okay, it has now selected that yellow and we can drop it into his hat here. So here's a shortcut that you'll um, find comes in very handy. If you hold control right now, you'll see that your mouse cursor changes. If you let go of control, it goes back to the eyedropper tool. When you're holding control, it's just a shortcut to the selection tool. Okay, so what I like to do is hold down control and go and click on the top part of Pinocchio's hat. That selects this top section. I can then go over to Pinocchio and I've let go of control now and I'm going to use the eyedropper and click on the top of his hat. And that just selects that yellow and drops it into my artwork. I'll then go and select the next part of his hat by holding control and clicking on it, letting go of control, and then going and clicking on that yellow again. And there's one more part to his hat there, so I'll hold control and click on that, let go of control, and then click on his hat. Okay, so you can see how quick it is to color in different parts of Pinocchio. Now to do the feather, there's multiple parts there. Now I could just go around and do what I did with the hat there where I held control, clicked on a section, colored it red, and just did that over and over again. But there's a quicker way to do it. You can actually hold Control and Shift to select multiple parts of this feather. So I'm going to select all the parts that need to be red and then let go of Control and Shift and just click on the red and that colors my feather in. Alright, so the next bit, um, the blue here is the same for his hat, his eyes and his bow tie thingy. So let's hold Control and Shift again and click on all those different sections of the artwork so we can color them all in, in one hit. So I'll let go of Control shift now and click, and that puts all the blue in my image. Um, for his skin tone, I think the face is just one color. His nose is a separate color. Uh, his mouth is separate as well, so we better do the tongue and the back of his mouth. And then it's just the hair, and I think we're pretty much done. Okay, there we go. So, whoop, the neck, forgot the neck. There we go. So we've now got a completed artwork, and you can see it looks awesome. I much prefer this vector image with the nice crisp and smooth lines compared to this pixelated one over here on the right. So I'm going to delete the one on the right, the reference image. We don't need that anymore. This is our image all finished. Um, just to finish off with here, if I was to pick something up and move it right now, it would just move the individual pieces. So what I'm going to do is highlight my entire artwork and group it together. So you can just right click on it and group it. That puts it all together. So now when I move it, it all moves together. If I resize it, I can make it as small as I want or I can make it as big as I want. It's never going to lose quality because it is a vector artwork now. Alright, so that is it. Uh, I'd highly recommend that you go online and get some other pictures and try and trace them. So if you're in my class, I've got a few others here. Um, so I've got Bart Simpson that you can have a bit of a play around with. And I've got the reference image here too for you to colour in with. I've got Mickey Mouse, I've got SpongeBob, Stewie, and I've got this skull here too. I'll just show you what that looks like. It's quite complex, so it traces it very quickly because of the thick black lines and does a really good job of it, but colouring it in can be a little bit painful. Okay, it does take a while, but it does look really cool once you get it coloured in. Alright, so once you're done, save it up, and that is all I'm going to show you and in Illustrator about tracing images. Okay, I'll catch you in another video.